Hey y'all. I know that this light is gonna be super weird. Um, but my ring light's way over there. Should I get it? I guess. This is gonna be tea in a book, by the way. <laughs> All right, so it is May, <laughs> which means this is the May tea box, but it feels like, I don't know, I'm gonna stop pretending like I know when I normally get this. Let's start with the tea this time. So, May, I was right, and the first one is Floss Maple. Do I need to tell you what the Sips Buy box is? I'll tell you real fast. I am not sponsored. I get this uh, purposefully and with my own money every single month. Basically, you go into the Sips Buy app and you mark down the kinds of flavors that you like, and then they send you four teas each month. So, my first one is uh, a cat spring yopon, a medium roast yopon called Lost Maples. Here's what it looks like. Mmm, crinkly, crinkly. It contains caffeine, which doesn't tell me anything, right? It just contains caffeine. Any more information than that? Sips by people. Smooth and mild, this medium roast yopon is inspired by lost maples, a forest unlike any other in Texas. Yopon is the only caffeinated herb native to the U.S. So, we've learned something today. The second tea, which I've already opened, is a gray, a um, lady gray. And I actually think there are seeds in there. Medium caffeine, why settle for a lady when you can be an empress? With the finest bergamot oil, other citrusy notes, and a secret blend of black teas, this Earl Grey tea is a beverage fit for royalty. I've already tried this one. I really enjoyed it. The bergamot and citrus is pretty heavy, which I like. Um, it smells great. And I love a black tea, and I love an Earl Grey, so it's all wonderful. Empress Lady Grey from stash okay here's one whose name i will definitely not say correctly um kancha janga noir maybe it's a nepal tea mm, a brisk black tea with fruity and floral fruity and floral aromas with hints of caramel you say caramel or caramel? Mm, I think I alter name. Flavor notes of raisins, cherries, and dark chocolate are prominent. I look forward to that. Also, look at that elephant. I love elephants. They are in my top three favorite animals. High caffeine. So, yay. Brisk flavor with a deep and vibrant reddish brown infusion. Hmm. All right. Ooh, and there's an offer. There always is. <laughs> okay. And then the last one is the Himalayan green tea. It comes in four separate. Um, I think these were in tea bags because I already tried this one too. <laughs> green tea is not my favorite. I actually don't think I make it well. You have to be a little bit more careful with those teas because they're young and they need less heat. Um... And I brew all of my tea up to the same heat and scorch everything, sometimes oversteep the black teas, the whole thing. On one of my recent tea and a book posts, somebody posted that there is something called a tea sommelier. And that would be super cool to do. I bet that it's expensive of a process. Um, and that there's probably a lot of stuff I have to learn that I don't really want to learn about so much as I want to drink the tea. So it's medium caffeine. The Himalayan region has a special type of soil and climate, bringing out the best character in tea. This premium green tea was skillfully handpicked at high elevations. So those are my four sips by teas.
for May. I can tell you without any guessing that two of them are really good. I'm curious about the maple one and whether or not it has a maple-y flavor, which is not my favorite flavor, um, but it might be okay. So we're going to check it out and see. I did have that weird maple one last month. Oh, I wonder if this is like maple season. Hmm. I did have that weird maple one last month that I liked more than I thought. So I'm not going to knock it until I try it. Okay, so the book for this month's Tina book is Grasshopper Jungle. Now, I actually meant to be wearing a TBF shirt for this, but I totally forgot. Um, because the reason why I'm reading this book by Andrew Smith is because he is going to be at the Rochester Teen Book Festival this upcoming Saturday, which is May 15th. It's totally free. It's going to be super awesome. Registration is on their website. Go there, register, and then attend several of the panels and hear from the authors. But Grasshopper Jungle was also recommended to me by my 12 or during my 12 friends, 12 books challenge in January. So I asked on my Facebook page, first 10, first 12 people who recommend a book, I'm going to read the book this year. So this was one of those. And coincidentally, he's coming to TBF. So that's kind of cool. So I'll give you the clean version of the book first. No spoilers, not a lot of opinions, just kind of what, what are the facts, ma'am? Let me read the inside and you will hear. In the small town of Ealing, Iowa, Austin and his best friend Robbie have accidentally unleashed an unstoppable army. An army of horny, hungry, six foot tall praying mantises that only want to do two things. This is the truth. This is history. It's the end of the world and nobody knows anything about it. You know what I mean. So this book is about 16 year old Austin and his best friend Robbie and his girlfriend Shannon. It is told from Austin's perspective as he recounts the history of what happened after these six foot praying mantises were unleashed how they found out what happened, what was going on, as well as what's woven in is some historical stuff about Austin's um, family who grew up in Poland and then came to Iowa, um, immigrated to Iowa. So the book is told, there's so many characters because it's a whole town, there's a whole bunch of praying mantises, there's this whole history, but it's told from Austin in a very comprehensive way. So it does feel a little bit redundant sometimes, but not in a bad way, in a way like, oh, thank goodness you reminded me who that random person was. So in one of the characters, Robbie actually tells Austin, I like the way you tell me everything to do with everything. Because if he's talking about you know, I just went to the bread store to pick up bread and I talked to Lewis. Lewis's father came from Argentina back in da 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 da. Like Austin is the historian of this incident and everything that occurred as related and maybe even only tangentially related to what's happened in this small town in Iowa. So I really liked it a lot. It's a solid four stars for me. I would teeter on a 4.5. Uh, it does get a little bit redundant, so maybe that m keeps it from being a five. I don't give a lot of five stars. It is probably best settled in the YA horror genre. Um, it is an end of the world book. One of the things about books written with a male protagonist and a male author that I've noticed is so much references to penises. It probably... <laughs> I mean, I think that boys talk and think about their penises a lot. Um, so that's not untrue. So that is not always <laughs> not always my favorite thing. Um, but he's a 16-year-old male and lots of other males of all the ages talk about their penises or farts or whatever a lot in the book. So if you're sensitive to that. Also, I noticed that male protagonists written by females don't do that. So, I mean... 
it probably is much more for like the relatability and you know what males remember 16 year old being but I also wonder if sometimes it's just the trope of adolescent malehood as well because I can't imagine but maybe so I don't know all right so I would recommend this book I really liked it it was holy shit what am I reading several times throughout this book it was different than I imagined, but I wasn't sure what I imagined. I can totally understand why my friend Chris recommended it to me. It was right up my alley, liked it. You should read it and also go to TBF. I will share a couple more things for people who don't care about spoilers. And um, if you're leaving now, I'll see you next time. Okay, <laughs> y'all. Grasshopper Jungle is a fucking crazy story, <laughs> okay? So, um, the main character, Austin, is a 16-year-old who is in love with his, his girlfriend, Shannon. They've been dating for a few years. And he's also in love with his best friend, Robbie. So one of the underlying stories of this story, of this uh, the underlying kind of storylines, is that Austin doesn't know what to do because he really wants to sleep with Shannon. And he also really wants to sleep with Robbie. Robbie and Shannon are each in love with him. And they know, you know, they're all three friends. So it's really the true, the true triangle part of a, of a love triangle. <coughs> Which, you know, technically requires at least one bisexual person. <laughs> um, because of the, it goes this way, right? So I really liked that part of the story, even though Austin's sort of a douche about it. Um, because he really doesn't want to, can't choose, can't really be honest about what's going on um, for him. The way that Andrew Smith writes Austin's thoughts and feelings for Robbie, though, he, like, Robbie's the one, right? Um, but the way Austin feels about Shannon in the way that it's, you know, whatever... Um, it's his girlfriend and he loves her too. So I liked that part of the story. It's that, I don't, I don't know that that's necessarily a spoiler, but it was a nice part of it. Um, the boys kick off a series of events related to how these praying mantises become, um, are released. It's, it, like part of the story is figuring out that it's a old super soldier serum or whatever that has been bonded with with blood or something like that so it's super bloody gory i'll put that as a content warning for everyone in the bottom but i really enjoyed it a lot and i think in end of the world stories the big thing that keeps you going is what's going to happen at the end but as it says you know, this is the truth. This is history. It's the end of the world. So you want to know how, how we get a history from Austin if it's the end of the world, right? Yes, you do. You should read this book. Funny, intense, complex, and brave. Grasshopper Jungle brilliantly weaves together everything from testicle dissolving, genetically modified corn to the struggles of recession era, small town America, and this groundbreaking coming of age stunner. So would recommend for anybody who likes the horror genre and the angsty teen male thing. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Catch you on the next one.